What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Devin. And I'm Lady Sam. We want to invite you to join us at Redemption Church. Here at Redemption, we are a 90-minute, power-packed, spirit-filled worship service. You'll be so glad you joined in with us. And check this out. Redemption is for broken people, the blended family, single, married people, and millennials alike. So join us here each and every Sunday. Well, here at Redemption, we're not just a church. We, we are, are a family. family.
the house of the Lord this morning. Come on, come on, let's just worship right now. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our minds, let's put our minds, let's shift our minds into a setting of worship real quick. Lord, we thank you. How many of us know that we have a God that can make a way out of no way? Yeah. We know that we serve a God that can do it yeah. over and over and over and over. Come on, Lord, we just love you. We just worship you, Lord. Lord, you tell me over and over. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving.
And so the doctor decided to take another look. And when he took another look, this time what he saw, what he saw last time, he didn't see this time. The, the thing that drove you crazy in 2017 should not have killed you in 2018. The stuff that got the best of you in 2018, you ought not take another look. You ought not take it in the 2019. So here it is. The doctor had to look at it again and said, what I saw then, I don't see now. See, I, I, I saw a reason to do surgery then. But I know I see no need for surgery now. Is there anybody in this place?
knows my name. Is there anybody who can give God praise because he knows your name? He knows your name. When, when he looks to bless you, he can, he can call out your name. He, he looks at you, you're in on your situation, and he calls out your name. Regina, he looks on your situation, and he calls out your name. Kevin, he looks in on your house and in your business, and he calls out your name. Mario, he, he calls out your name. In the midst of your darkest moments, your toughest trials, he calls out your name.
is it? Not a whole lot of time. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Come on. All right, come on. Grab your seat. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Put your hands together. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Praise God. We welcome our online viewers today. Amen. 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 A special shout out to Miss Wanda. I'm glad the Lord brought her back to her home. I'm not coming today. I got to look out for mom. You got no arguments out of me, Josh. Amen. Let's give God praise in this place. Come on. One more time. Let's give the name of the Lord. Let's get to it. Un un uncensored. Uncensored part two. Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Uncensored part two. Y'all going to let me do it? Yes. So listen, the story goes that that was a young man who greatly idolized his grandfather. Uh -huh. In his eyes, his grandfather could do no wrong. Right. In, in, in his eyes, his grandfather was everything, catch this, that his father was not. His grandfather was brilliant and well-educated, where his father <coughs> failed to even finish school. His, his grandfather, it was noted that his grandfather was highly successful and a businessman and entrepreneur, uh -huh. where his father never fully established any cons consistent career to call his own. Okay. His grandfather was wealthy, where, where his father oftentimes had to beg and borrow just to get by. Yeah. His, his grandfather was a rather charming man who knew how to light up a room. But his father, on the other hand, had the demeanor of a man who had been broken and was yet bitter. And one of the things that the young man liked most about his grandfather was that his grandfather seemed to be the only man who could put his father in check. But when his father, when his grandfather passed away, catch this, his, his grandfather's final request was that the young man would gather with his father and that he would read the grandfather's will out loud. And what they thought would be about their inheritance <coughs> turned out to be horrific. Come on, come on. It was from the grave, catch this, that the grandfather shared how, how disappointed he was with his son. Uh -huh. How he had little to no respect for him at all and counted him as the greatest failure of his life. Yeah. What they thought would be about a physical or financial inheritance yeah. turned out to be a spiritual inheritance. Right, right. What do you mean? He saw his grandfather in a way that he never had seen him before. Yeah. And it was at that moment in that young man's life that he finally, he finally understood the pain of his father. Yeah. Yeah. It was at that moment in that young man's life that he finally had a moment in which he understood the why he was the way he was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, See, it's been said that hurt people tend to hurt people. It has been said that those who have been abused oftentimes become abusive. Those who are in pain have a tendency to cause pain. That's how pain patterns oftentimes get passed from generation to generation to generation. In other words, I need you to understand that unrepentance junior breeds repetition. Unrepentance breeds Repetition. Yeah. You don't believe it. Let's look at our text. Genesis 19 verses 30 through 32. The scripture says, Now Lot went up to Zoar, uh -huh. and he lived in the hills with his two daughters. Yeah. For he was afraid to live in Zoar, so he lived in the cave with his two daughters. Watch this. And the firstborn, his oldest daughter says, watch this. She says to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on earth, catch this, to come into us. So come, let us, watch this, let us make our father drink wine and we are lay with him that we might preserve the offspring from our father. Listen, I need you to look at your neighbor real quick and say, what you don't repeat, what you don't repent, they will repeat. What, what, what you don't repent, they, they will repeat. What, 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 what you won't cut off, what you won't cut off, catch this, you will cultivate. Jesus. Yeah, what, 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 what you don't, what you don't. 
know uproot will show up in you. But what, what, what you don't, what you, what you don't pay off, uh -huh. your people will have to pay for. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't think just because you chose to die that your bills will die with you. Well. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody got to pay for it. But what you don't cut off, you cultivate. What, what you don't pay off, somebody else has to pay for. Yeah. I need you to understand that there are some things in your life that you need to watch this do away with now. Yeah. So they won't do your children later. Yeah. That there are some things in your life, watch this, that you need to kill so your kids won't inherit. Yeah. I wish I had a church. Yeah. But what, what, you don't, what you don't repent, that they, they will, watch this, what you don't repent, they will uh -huh. repeat. Come on, let's, let's look at Lot. Let's look at Lot. Listen, let's look at Lot. Genesis chapter 12, chapter 11, verse 27 is when we meet Abraham. Uh -huh. And shortly thereafter, watch this, the Bible introduces us to Lot. Right, right. It's, it's in chapter 12 that God tells Abraham to leave your country and your family. Yeah. Go to a place that I will show you. But right alongside of him, there was Lot. Yeah. The Bible lets us know that Abraham passed through Egypt and God blessed him there in that place. And right alongside of him, there was Lot. Uh -huh. When he came out of Egypt on his way to Negev, watch this. Even when he came out of Egypt, watch this, there was God was blessing him even in that place. And who did he also bless right alongside of him was Lot. Verse 13, chapter 13 lets us know that Abraham had amassed a whole lot of money right. and a whole lot of possessions. Yeah. And who was also blessed? Yeah. Lot. Yeah. Lot. Yeah. What, what is it? Lord, what is it about Lot? Uh -huh. I believe that the reason why Lot was blessed because he was connected to Abraham. Yeah. 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 Lot, Lot, Lot was a son. He was a son of Aram. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he was a nephew of Lot. And when his daddy died prematurely, right. Abraham picked up the responsibility and began to father him. Yeah. And I believe, watch this, because Abraham and Sarah did not conceive themselves, everything that Abraham had amassed, yeah. Lot was supposed to inherit. Yeah. 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 Yet the Bible lets us know, watch this, in chapter 13, verse 8, that Abraham says to Lot, let us separate because I don't want no beef between me and you. Right. You got stuff, I got stuff. Now your people tripping against my people. Yeah. Instead of watch, instead of us going to war, go do your own thing. Watch this. Lot looked around. This is why I got an issue with Lot. Lot looks around. He looks at the land and says, that, that looks fine to me. I'm going to go over there. Yeah. Yeah. This, is what, this is why I think Lot gets to tripping. Because here's the man who has blessed you your whole life. You would think that he said, no, daddy, you look first. You take care of yourself and I'll get what's left. Lot shows up and says, let me look and see what I can get. Yeah. Catch this. Come on, Miss Brooke. Lot says, Lot says, I'm going to go that way because the land looks green. And you know, things that look green. You know how we chase green. You know how we chase things that sparkle. You know how we chase things that light up. You know how we chase things that look good to us. This is look. Lot made a decision that worked out only for himself. Right. Right. Can I suggest to you as you again that you need to check your connection? Come on. Come on. I suggest to you every now and again you need to you need to take inventory of your relationship. Look at somebody and say, check your connection. See, the truth of the matter, yes, the truth of the matter is that some of us are just like Lot. Mm -hmm. We hang around long enough just to get stuff. Right. And when we get it, we go. Yeah. Yeah. But we hang around long enough to get stuff. And we, once we get what we want, we out of here. Matter of fact, there are some folk in your life right now that are not there because of who you are. They're there because of what you can give them. Oh! Yeah. Apostle! Look at your neighbors and check your connection. See, I, I don't know about you, but I need God to point out every Jacob in my life. Yeah. Let me help somebody. If you remember Jacob, Jacob was born holding on to the heel of his brother. And I've come to discover in Washington that there are too many folk in the church that perfected that Jacob-like spirit. You, I, I won't let you go until you bless me. 
And here's the problem. We, we shout on that, thinking that that's something to shout about. When, watch this, truly, we don't really want the hand of God. We only really want what's in it. I, I won't let you go until you bless me. That's selfish. Yeah. Jacob, it wasn't Israel that said it. It was Jacob that said it. You do know that Jacob was a trickster yeah. who held on to folks so he could get what he wanted. Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Jacob, how about hold on until after he blessed you? Yeah. Yeah. Every now and again, you got to check your you got to check your connection. Yeah. That, you don't really want the hand of God. You only want what's in God's hand. That's not listen, that, that's not praising God. I need you to understand that's pimping God. Mm. That, that, that's not praising God. That's, that's pimping God. G get, give me what I need. Some of us use God like a spiritual ATM. Talk about it, sir. We, we, we make no deposits. But we won't always draw. Offering time, you get. <laughs> Worship time, you won't even. <laughs> Open up your mouth and give God. I don't do that. Come on. Come on, give God a fruit of your lips. Now, I'll make noise. Come on, don't be a member. Just, don't, don't be just a member. Be a mover. Now, I, I just need to get the word to go. Many of us come to church only looking to see what we can get. Wow. But we never come to give. Check your connection. Come on. Yes. Come on. This, this is not a religious thing. This is a relationship thing. Yes. And if you have a real relationship with Jesus, right. the one who went to the cross for you, yes. the, the one who died for you, the yes. one who sacrificed it for you, yes. the one who washes, the only reason why you're healed is because he took strife for yes. you. The one who endured everything that you didn't have to endure, even though you deserve to endure it. Yes. If you have a real relationship with him, how can you come in and say that? How can you sit down on the man who got up for you? Yeah. How, how can you how can we, you withdraw your praise because it makes you uncomfortable to shout in church? Mm -hmm. Wow. How, 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 can, how can you hold back giving God glory? When he didn't hold back nothing for you. I'm sensitive to it because I used to do it myself. I, I remember as a little boy, I used to sit back in church and say, look, man, I see all them shouting, praising, hollering, all that. They speaking in tongues. It don't take all of that. But, but then the, the, the record tells me, watch it. It didn't take all of that, but the record tells me that he laid down his whole life. So when he looked on your issue, he said, it's going to take everything I got. So since he took you everything he got, and then we didn't buy him, we give everything you got. I said, since he took everything he had, is there anybody who can give God the best that you got? Oh, if, if you really have a relationship with him, if your connection is strong, can you give God glory? more?
Abraham assembles 318 of his boys when he goes down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they go and recover Abraham. They go and recover Lot. So Lot makes his decision that that looked best for him. Catch this. That's why I don't need you, that's why I really gotta keep moving, because I, I you gotta get this. Yeah. Right. So Lot makes the decision that looked best for him, yet this decision almost destroyed him. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then the Bible declares that Abraham shows up to deliver him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Catch this. And after all of that, uh-huh. Lot still decides to go back. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Oh, after all of after y'all get you shouting, yeah. still yeah. Oh, yeah. And this time when he goes back, catch this, I need you to catch this. 
Oftentimes, when God delivers you from something that's bad, and you go back, it's not bad when you get back. It gets worse. It gets worse. See, the first time, they were just conquered. But this time, they're under condemnation. First time, they were just conquered. But this time, it was condemnation. You know the story. So God sends two angels. Because he's about tired of them. And he's about to do his thing. Lot is there. So catch this. Lot is there. Right? He got his wife with him and his two dogs. And so when the mob sees, watch this, not, not just a mob. This mob was a whole bunch of male molesters yeah. who saw two men coming in looking good and said, we got to kill them. Yeah. I ain't talking about jumping them. They, they weren't looking to jump them in. They, they, they weren't looking for two new gang members. They were looking for some good fun ball. Yeah. Yeah. So here, here is a whole gang of male molesters yeah. that's knocking on Lot's door looking for two men who just came in. Yeah. What, watch what Lot does. Now, as a father, I can't handle this. Watch what Lot does. Instead of, watch this, instead of sending the men back out, Lot says, here, take my two girls. Oh. Wow. 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 I'm a father with two girls. I can't, I can't, I can't figure that out. He says, take, don't, don't, don't touch them. Get, take my girls. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. So you know the record. Let me bring this thing in. So you know the record. So, Instead of doing anything, the angel said, I got you because his fool is, he tripped. Yeah. Yeah. Dawah, he done lost his claw mind. What, what, what he's doing is, is flat out in See, I can't stand the notion of sending your two girls to a, yeah. a gang of whole horny men. Yeah. So the angels go out there and they do their thing. And they tell Lot, take your girls and go roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. go this is where it gets critical. Uh -huh. well, why is it critical? Let's look at the text. The text says Lot left Zoar right. and went into the mountains to live. Right. Yeah. He's with his two dogs. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was afraid. Y'all know what happened to his wife. We ain't got to cover that. Yeah. So he's afraid to stay in Zoar, so he decides to live in a cave again with his two girls. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 31, 32 is the message version. One day the older daughter says to the younger daughter, our father is getting old and there is no man left in the country who can get us pregnant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's get our father drunk and sleep with him. Woo. What you don't repent, they will repeat. Look, look, at, look at it now. They, 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 they're not, that question, this is what they're doing. They're now exemplifying exactly what they've been exposed to. Wow. Yeah. They're now showing signs of what they've seen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question that you yeah. should not answer? What are you exposing your babies to? Yeah. 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 We have a whole lot to say about this generation, but what huh? they all are doing what they saw. What they saw. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, notice. Notice. Let's wrap it up. Notice. This wasn't just. This wasn't just insects. Uh huh. They got daddy drunk, slept with him. Uh huh. The next night, the younger daughter got daddy drunk, slept with him. Uh huh. This is not just incense. No, it's not. If it was the other way around, we flat out declare what it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is not just incense. This is this is rape. Uh -huh. Let's call it what it is. This, yeah. this is rape. They, they got him drunk and took advantage of him. If a man did the same thing, it's yeah. all rape. Yeah. Yeah. If you stick the Mickey in your drink and you didn't know it, it's called rape. It doesn't matter if you change your mind and he went through it anyway, it's still called rape. Yeah. You could have said yes 15 minutes ago and no 10 minutes later. It's still called rape. Yeah. So these two girls who Lot chose to raise up in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know the story. You know what they were doing. He chose to raise them up in Sodom and Gomorrah, and now they're showing signs of Sodom. Come on. Come on. This is flat out, flat out rape. According to the National Sexual Violence Resource Center, 
one out of every five women have experienced rape in their lifetime. Eight out, of, eight out of ten all suggest that they know the person who sexually violated them. Eighty-one percent to thirty-five percent of men all experience long-term or short-term, watch this, post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of their sexual assault. Wow. Jesus. I need you to catch this. Watch this. This is not, this is not just a physical assault. Right. Yeah. This thing is spiritual. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look at some of the, look at some of the, catch it. Hmm. Not only do they have post-traumatic stress disorder, but they suffer through flashbacks and nightmares. Wow. Yeah. They suffer through anxiety and uncontrollable fears. They suffer from depression, sadness, and hopelessness. They, they suffer from a whole inter a, a loss of interest even in life. They suffer through disassociation. Yeah. Yeah. This is not just a physical attack. It's a spiritual one. Yes. My God. Mm. Paul says in Ephesians, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Right. But against spiritual weakness in high places. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Jesus. Yep, yep. The sad truth of it is, again, here is a here's a subject that is plaguing one of five people in this place here. Mm. One of five women who come to church have had to suffer the rape. Yeah. Mm. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, and it's not a physical thing that was taken from them. It's an emotional and spiritual thing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Studies suggest that everybody who has dealt with that subject, dealt with that, that issue in their life, tends to watch them to turn their back on God. Mm. Mm. Do you see what the enemy is doing? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Because you feel the shame and guilt, like you did something wrong, they don't show up anymore. Disassociation. Right. So if the enemy can separate you from the camp, yeah. Yeah. if he can get you in isolation, yeah. Yeah. Mm. help today. That's why it's time out for just this shouting and dancing. Yeah. Yeah. People are hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when they come in and they're not, they're not as joyful as you want them to be, you write them off. Wow. Yeah. See? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> When they don't have shouting that feet like you got shouting your feet, you just put them on the other on the weak side of the church. Uh -huh. Sit over there with the normal shower. Wow. <laughs> sit, 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 sit in the back so you won't. So we try to get it up here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the truth of the matter: some of us have never experienced right and never will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Watch this, but but the enemy has tried to rape you or something. Mm. He's tried to rape you of your peace. Uh -huh. yeah. He's trying to rape you of your dream. Yeah. 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 He's trying to rape you of your relationship with God. He's trying, yeah. to, he's trying to take something from you uh -huh. and don't want you to get it back. Yeah. Okay. I hear God saying today, you look at Lot in the Old Testament. Uh -huh. You look at Lot in the New Testament. Yeah. Right, right. What is God trying to tell you? Yeah. There is restoration for anybody who's at the middle range. Yeah. Yes, Lord. R.E.D. Mm -hmm. He looks to restore everything that's dead. Yes, God. Yeah. So it's no coincidence that you're sitting in Redemption Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were redeemed. Yeah. No matter what you suffer through in your life. No matter what the enemy has tried to extract from you, what, how he's tried to rape and malicious you, uh -huh. God says, I'm here to restore you. Yeah. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It doesn't matter what your record was. Yes, right, right, right. I know what you still are. Yes, See, so your, sin, your sin may look like you've been depreciated, uh -huh. but God says, I still see the value in you. by anything that the enemy has been trying to do to you. Whatever he stole from you, I need you to understand that he can't have it because it belongs to you. And whatever the Lord has spoken on your life, look at
look at your neighbor and say, it shall be. Uh, Y'all saying that like we defeated folks. I said, look at your neighbor and shout, it shall be. Whatever the Lord has declared over your life, it shall. Whatever promise he puts in your life, it shall come to pass. Whatever he's spoken in your marriage, it shall be. Whatever your destiny is, look at somebody and say, it shall be. No matter what the enemy is trying to do in your life, look at your neighbor and shout, it shall be. It shall be. You, you are victorious. This is what the Bible declares about believers. You, you are victorious. You, 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 you are more than a conqueror. You, you are a, the head and not the tail. You, you are a lifter and not a borrower. You, you are above and not beneath. You, you are the inheritance of God. You, you are the promised child of God. You, you are a prince in the kingdom. You, it shall be. Declaring that everything that you have for me, God, I come and claim it in right now. 